Hey y'all, Scott here. Wow, it's almost like you don't need things to be happy. You don't need them to be fucking pissed either. So, I gave away my entire video game collection as a part of community service to get out of prison this month. Which means not only do I no longer own Sonic Jam, I'm also no longer the guy who owns Sonic Jam! Now I gotta rebuild my game collection and that's gonna be pricey. But that's okay, because I know a few tricks on how to get all the games I need for practically nothing! Video games are expensive! Well stop playing them like that! You spend a full $70, then $35 to get the contents of the Digital Deluxe Edition, which is only $100, but I want to get punished for not having the foresight to buy that version first. Of course, I need a PlayStation Plus subscription to be, so at this point, I need a persistent and stable internet connection. And a roof. So now I need a loan for a house, but I can't with this credit score. So how are we gonna raise it? Well, 5,000 Luther coins is a start. In the end, how much does it cost to play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League? My will to live. Modern game prices are out of control. They expect me to blow my cash on every new release, plus their downloadable content while making recurring payments to each subscription service every month and investing in accessories that are more expensive than the game console themselves. The right to, but still. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't have to be this way. You can have just as much fun for free as you can with a modern game for $70. Gaming on a budget. Some may call this impossible. Playing video games is one of the most expensive hobbies you can have. To that I say, introducing heroin. Yes, many video games are overpriced, but I personally believe in the grand scheme of things, if you play your cards right, this is a fairly large bang for your buck kind of medium. I mean, what? $30 for a digital 83 minute movie? And 20 to rent it? Bunch of cool bitches come up with these prices. But I, even then, there are so many cheap and or free options to watch movies. Tubi, Larceny. And the same applies to video games. If you set your mind to it, you can get by on damn near nothing, all while playing some of the greatest, longest lasting experiences of all time. Yeah, okay, but I still bought Suicide Squad. Now I've already discussed gaming on a budget years ago, and by now I've already discussed gaming on a budget years ago, I mean, I f***ed up. Only four minutes spent on this topic and one of those precious minutes being used to just gawk in a game store and what was my conclusion? To buy Trivial Pursuit for Xbox? Uh, yes, that was great advice on my part. Oh, you just got shot in the face? Well, don't do that. I mainly wanted to showcase how you can get a lot of entertainment out of something that cost very little. But there's so much more to discuss here. Like how do I get out of debt? They say the best things in life aren't free. Oh yeah, well what do they say about this? They say the best things in life aren't free. But that doesn't mean there aren't quality free gaming experiences out there. Uh, for one, we can milk the hell out of some demos. Uh, who needs to buy Sonic Forces when we can just play the demo for free? It's almost as bad as the full thing. I'm looking to find the most bang for my buck demo. And with my buck being, so my bang being, there is no bang. It's obvious I can't expect much, but I wanted to find demos that could either be played indefinitely or could practically be their own standalone games with how in depth and long they are. But listen, if you need me to tell you what the best free things are before you buy them for free, you might as well ask me, should I eat this? Damn. It's so obvious what to do here. Just try it yourself. That's the point of a free demo. And hey, if you're that desperate for entertainment, why aren't you actually? God, I just need something to play for free. I said something, not some things. Scott's definitive list of free demos you can get just as much, if not more, out of than full games. First up, Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. I mean, really. Any puzzle game like this can be played indefinitely, even if the options here are extremely limited. Uh, you're still playing Tetris and Poyo Poyo. Every time you play, it'll be a fresh experience, which means theoretically, you can just jam on this and you'd be set for life. Life sucks. Clubhouse Games Guest Pass. This may be primarily a free app for local wireless multiplayer, so you only need one full copy of the game to play across multiple switches, but it comes with four full games on its own. And when it comes to this tabletop stuff, I mean, 
It's timeless. You aren't human if you get sick of this. Yep, you aren't human if you get sick of this. This is my way of weeding out the frogs in the audience. The demo for Life is Strange 2 is a standalone experience titled The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit, which on its own is about an hour and a half long, and for a story-based game like this, I mean, there you go, free movie. But in addition, with the first two Life is Strange games being episodic, the first episodes of each are free. Well, that's the case for tons of these types of releases, so if you have no problem with cliffhangers... That was truly sad. Thanks for your concern, Max Coffee. You're set! Capcom Arcade Stadium 1 and 2 follow this setup, all right? You download them for free, and then you buy the classic arcade games you want, or just pick up the bundle featuring all of them. But in that initial free download, you get a full, original, old-school Capcom Arcade humdinger. That's right, in Arcade Stadium 1, we get 1943 Battle of Midway, and in 2, we get Sansan. I know, if this is free, what's the point of currency to begin with? But hey, two retro arcade titles readily offered free of charge. You can't beat that. Unless you're not Sansan. Final Fantasy XIV Online is completely free until you hit level 70. No limit on where you can go in the game, how long you can play, just until you level up enough, you don't have to pay. Thank God I suck. But hey, RPG demos in general can be some of the most in-depth out there, with many bringing your progress over to the full game once you buy it. Though I'd say on their own, they're not really all too milkable. I mean, are you really gonna infinitely replay the Octopath Traveler 2 demo? Are you really gonna play Sansan? This list here was mostly just for fun, considering how many actual games you can get for free these days. Uh, especially if you don't mind free to play games. Some hate them. Others hate them more, but you can't deny how successful this model can be for certain titles. Uh, lowering the entry fee to just your integrity. Problem with these is most are not completely free. I mean, sometimes it's impossible to progress at all without forking over some cash. Uh, grab some upgrades via microtransactions and what have you. And then if you're playing a free-to-play game on mobile, what, every four times you tap the screen, a new minute-long unskippable ad pops up and it's like, oh, great. After seeing this for the 80th time, Fine, all right, I'll do something different and pick Swim Away quietly. There's definitely more than enough of this type of free content out there, and a lot of it can still be great fun. But it's so easy to find free-to-play games these days. Let's talk some purely free games. No asterisk, no microtransactions, no ads for better games, and we can find an unlimited supply over on the PC. By that, I mean CoolMathGames.com, but let's go a bit more traditional here. Street Fighter Cross Mega Man is an official PC game that's always been available for free. It started life as a fan game, but once Capcom caught wind of it and realized they needed something to celebrate Mega Man's anniversary, they made a deal with the developer and fully backed the project, which is simultaneously really cool and really fucking lame. This didn't feel like Capcom published this for the greater good. It felt like they did it out of desperation. This was during a time in which Mega Man was in the slums. Multiple game cancellations and no new real title for years, but hey, look at the bright side. I've been angrier. So Street Fighter Cross Mega Man being a fan game retooled into something, anything Mega Man related for Capcom to pump out, it's a bit pathetic. But it's also a pretty good classic Mega Man experience, retailing for a whopping free. And it's only on PC, but it costs nothing to download, much like the Elder Scrolls Arena and Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. That's right, the first two Elder Scrolls games are completely free on PC. These incredible, groundbreaking RPGs you can spend hundreds of hours in are just being given away. It makes no sense. Let's play them. Damn, they're just giving this away for free? Yeah, these you truly have to be devoted to to get much out of. But if they are your thing, congratulations! Your debt matters not! But hey, if we want something a bit less archaic, the original version of Cave Story on PC has always been free. Even after it received a Wii release in 2010 for 12 bucks, a Nintendo Switch release in 2017 for 30, the core game from 2004 is free. And you wouldn't know that looking at me. It's one of the most revered indie games of all time. And it's just 
there. I know some fans vastly prefer the original to any of these paid re-releases, so you really can't go wrong here. The same goes for the original version of Spelunky, another indie darling. Uh, problem is, comparing this to the modern release, Damn. But see, that's the funny thing about Cave Story. It's the opposite. I'm paying more for less. Indie games are some of the most frequent freebies you can get. Oh, Minecraft back in its early days was a free download. But that's just the thing. It wasn't free forever. So sometimes you gotta act fast. God damn it, I tried. The Epic Game Store on PC. Some hate it, others... Hate it. But because of that, Epic Games has attempted week after week to offer premium titles for free at no cost to the user, other than using the Epic Game Store. Oh man, you have Guardians of the Galaxy? How much did it cost? Nothing, but, but like, f man. So those are just a handful of ways you can play games for free. Oh, oh that and stealing. Yeah, all right. I've been primarily talking about games that were officially released for free. Unless we want to open up a can of ew. I mean, who are we fooling here? You ask for games to play for free and I tell you don't sh your pants. Just Google play Mario. Is it really your fault if you're playing an unauthorized free emulation of Mario 2 if it's this easy to do and Nintendo hasn't taken it down yet? I don't even have to download anything. This is all in a browser. Yeah, so the concept of a what free games are out there kind of falls apart when to find half of these in the first place, I have to Google play Sonic games for free. And what, I'm just supposed to ignore the thousands of results with the actual games and pretend that the free visual novel they released for April Fool's Day is a legitimate recommendation on how to play a Sonic game for free? With just a laptop, you can access so much free content. And on dedicated video game consoles, most free titles are free to play or they're free for a limited time. And honestly, if you wanna know which ones are worth your time, why are you wasting your time listening to me? Just download whatever looks cool to you. So. Let's focus on something else, saving money by spending money. Oh yeah, time to budget. I think I speak for everybody when I say subscription services are far from exciting these days. Hell, I'd go as far to say I'd rather be happy than have a Peacock account. I have a Peacock account. But I think these services get out of hand when you're juggling multiple. If you hone in on one in particular that's delivering the entertainment you want, you can get a lot of value out of it. So let's take a look at these, starting with Xbox Game Pass. And I already know this is a great deal because we can just keep buying Pop-Tarts and get a free week of this thing. You know what that means? We're crossing gluttony off the list. Xbox Game Pass has a few different options here. The cheapest being the core membership. For 10 bones a month, you get online multiplayer and a bit over 30 games you can download and play, which does change from time to time. This isn't a permanent list by any means, but it's obvious Microsoft intends it to always hit the quality standard of pretty good. A great variety here with indie games, simulation games, first person shooters, online multiplayer titles, local multiplayer titles, RPGs, platformers, classic games, modern hits, the works. For only $10 a month, this is great. As a scam, $100 a year for access to a handful of titles. Access to, they aren't playable forever and the lineup gets shaken up a few times a year. And with many of these games being priced at, oh man, three numbers? It really doesn't feel worth it. That is until you add up the value of all the games included and it turns out this is actually hundreds of dollars in value. So yeah, it really does feel worth it until you realize it really doesn't feel worth it. So I went on price charting websites and found the cheapest going rates of any games available via physical methods. And if they're digital only, the MSRP on the Xbox store and yeah, yeah, even with many of these titles going for incredibly low prices, the sum of owning all of this is well over $400. But that's the thing, owning all of this is well over $400. Keep in mind, you don't own anything with these services, and by owning the physical stuff, you can resell that. And the concept of all this being valued at over $400 makes me question, you really gonna play all this? Yeah, it's $100 a year for 30 plus games worth well over that, but are they really worth anything if you're not even gonna boot them up? I find that many of these subscription services are more about convenience than value. Like just the concept that I could play any of these games at a moment's notice is enough for me. And yes, Game Pass Core is how you get online multiplayer. So these games are more so a bonus rather than the reason you buy into the service. 
but I'm just looking at this from the perspective of somebody who wants to get games on the cheap. But with Game Pass Core having such a small selection of titles, I'd recommend either just picking up the ones that interest you rather than paying an ongoing fee, or flat out biting the bullet on Game Pass Ultimate. Now this is more like it! Access to hundreds of games, some of which are brand new $70 releases, day and date on Game Pass. Well that seems like a- I've paid $200 a year to play $70 games before they cost $15 that very year. Here's some financial advice! All right, so Game Pass does have a ton of value, but a lot of it depends on how varied your tastes are. Like maybe one day you're feeling Madden 22, and then the next Madden 23. Oh, I know what I'm doing tomorrow. It all comes back to my original point of, if you're not gonna play a good chunk of these, why even bother? Make a checklist of all games available via Game Pass to see how many you're actually going to play, and if it's a decent amount, sure. Hell, if you can play through the games you wanna play through in two weeks, it'll only cost you a dollar. And if this is your only method of playing games, you don't wanna buy anything else, just Game Pass, $200 a year isn't horrible for what can amount to hundreds of hours of entertainment. But keep in mind, many of these titles frankly worthless. Used game stores are practically giving them away, so why play them under a monthly subscription fee if that's 17 times more expensive than just a one and done purchase? Well, because you get all these other games and it's so convenient. Here, as a Game Pass subscriber, I'm gonna play Gotham Knights. This game stinks. Game Pass is cool, but I wouldn't rely on it year round for all things gaming, considering how as I browse the lineup, 80% of it looks exactly the same as five years ago. And as frequently as new games get announced to be joining Game Pass, they leave just as fast. But that's not to say this isn't a good service to take advantage of. I'd say if a new game releases into it that you know you'll play within that month, uh, just subscribing for those 30 days is an effective way to play select modern titles on the cheap. Uh, just remember to cancel when you're done. Hey Scott, Future Scott here. You forgot to cancel Game Pass. Oh my God, is everything okay? Better than okay. It's not bad. Thanks to Game Pass, I'm flat broke, which means I can't buy into Ubisoft Plus. I think it goes without saying, but any publisher specific subscription service, yeah, that's not the smartest move when you're so broke you have to eat the inedible. $18 a month for Ubisoft Plus? That's more expensive than Game Pass. Who cares about Ubisoft exclusively enough to subscribe to this? Same goes for EA Play, which is already included in an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate membership. And like, what are you getting this by itself for? FIFA 17? Now on the PlayStation side of things, there's PlayStation Plus, which is practically the same as Game Pass. I mean, you don't get as many day one AAA releases as that, but is that really a benefit of Game Pass? <laughs> Hey, think about it this way. If you have Game Pass, you could play these games without having to buy them outright. Why would I want to play them to begin with? PlayStation Plus's game catalog has the benefit of PlayStation exclusives being a part of it, and a lot of the same kind of stuff you see in Game Pass, all at a comparable price point, so it depends on which lineup or console you prefer. Uh, but my advice remains. Don't take my advice. Subscription services can be used to your benefit if you're on a budget, even in other ways outside of just canceling after a month. You can find all kinds of deals out there from different stores where these memberships are cheaper. My problem comes into play when we consider where all this money is going. Turns out, it's going to gone. This is what I'm talking about when I say these services are about convenience, not value. I spend $10 a month and I get permission to play Gotham Knights. Well, gee. Thank God I didn't waste money on this, I say as I'm spending $200 a year. Or how about I just spend $5 more on a one and done purchase and then I can do whatever the hell I want with this thing. Hell, maybe even sell it for more than I bought it for. You never know, it could happen. My point is, if you're looking to play on the cheap, Take advantage of these services when it makes sense to. They offer a ton, but don't depend on them because if you're not careful, you forget you're subscribed or there's nothing that's interesting to you on them, it is genuinely the equivalent to flushing your money down the toilet. Hey, I may have bought Gotham Knights, but at least I can flush the money down myself. So yeah, under most circumstances, I'd say physical video games are better to nab if you're looking to game on a budget. Speaking of which, 
am very fortunate to be based out of Toledo, Ohio. And for my next lie, I have 12 fingers. We have supposedly one of the best zoos in the country. Yeah, I don't know about that one. King of the jungle, my ass. Tony Pacos is a big name around these parts. So is Wendy's. And it's nicknamed the Glass City. Wise. <laughs> Huh, that. But regardless of what you may think of Toledo, the fact is we are swimming in used video game stores. Uh, something not many can say about their hometown, so I understand how fortunate I am to be living in Toledo. But I know that isn't the case for everybody, so I'm not telling you, hey, I can pick up clacks after lunch. What's your excuse? Rather, I want to show that buying secondhand games is one of the most effective ways to play on the cheap, and what better way to do that than supporting local business? Like GameStop! You might as well kick things off with the one everybody knows, because if you want used games now, GameStop is probably the best bet for any average person in the US. Oh my god, Scott, stop being so negative! GameStop was never incredible, but back in the day, there was at least stuff to look at in here. Now, it's just the blandest, most barren walls of video games I've ever seen, and focusing on just modern titles and geek merchandise on clearance means there's little to discover or explore in a GameStop. But we can damn well try! Basically, I want to spend a clean 100 bones on a game console and a stack of games that I can imagine lasting me quite a long time. Starting with the game console, the cheapest one available is the original Xbox One, damn it. Alright, well there's no point in doing this if I can go on eBay right now and get this same console with games included as destiny as they may be for the price point I limited myself to. I don't want to act like you can't get good games for good prices at GameStop, but it can be pretty situational, and in the case of consoles, we can get these cheaper elsewhere, so let's just focus on spending $100 on games from GameStop for our Xbox One we just bought on eBay for another $100. <laughs> For $100 at GameStop, I was able to pick up Rare Replay, The Witcher 3, Madden 20, Immortals Phoenix Rising, Gears of War 4, Grand Theft Auto 5, Hasbro Family Fun Pack, Rise Sun of Rome, Battlefield 5, Titanfall 2, Just Cause 3, Tales of Arise, Red Dead Redemption 2, Rage 2, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, Prey. Okay, scratch Red Dead. Better. This is a pretty great lineup for the price. But I gotta be honest, I was struggling with the stock they had. GameStop ain't what it used to be, but thankfully, they had enough used Xbox games available to net a good library for $100. Now, for the next person who walks in trying to net a good library for $100, I am so sorry. The star of the show here is Rare Replay for five bones. That's 30 titles across 30 plus years of gaming history, spanning all different kinds of genres. Uh, sure, not all of them are winners. In fact, I'd say about half of the games included are downright unfortunate. But Rare Replay also includes some of the most beloved games of all time as well. Well, a couple with tons of side content and unlockables, for $5, I genuinely don't think we could have gotten a better value here. Could have been cheaper though. Alright, so Madden here can just represent any sports game if that's your thing. I mean, like, if you're on a budget and you like playing sports games, just buy the previous years. Hell, all fans of these sports games say how much better the previous years were, so why are we doing this? I think it counts in the red. Oh, hey, Madden. The Witcher 3, Grand Theft Auto 5, Immortals Phoenix Rising, Just Cause 3, all meaty open world games you can play forever. I mean, GTA and Witcher alone would suffice, but these two are a quality time for undeniably low prices. Uh, games like Rise Sun of Rome, Titanfall 2, Rage 2, Prey, Battlefield 5, Middle Earth, I mean, I primarily picked up because they were dirt cheap and solid titles. Uh, Tales of Arise gives us a meaty RPG, Gears of War 4 is fine, and Hasbro Family Fun Pack, because when in doubt, play Scrabble, bitch. I feel that for $200, this collection and an Xbox One it's all you really need. You can live off of this for years, and honestly, if you're desperate for something new, here. Thankfully, with these systems having online stores and multiplayer, even after you exhaust the possibilities of your physical game collection, you can just milk the piss out of all the free junk you can download. There's always Tubi. Always. Now, even though I feel these games would suffice for quite a while, keep in mind, we own these now and can do with them as we please. And at the very least, trading them back into GameStop nets us roughly $15. And you know what we can do with that? Well, it's probably better to sell this stuff independently on eBay or maybe even the independent game stores. From the Toledo, Ohio area, it's Flotsam Games and Collectibles. Where GameStop falls short, Flotsam picks up the slack. Uh, but unfortunately, 
Game prices ain't what they used to be, especially consoles. I remember back in 2017 when I picked up an original Xbox and a stack of games for only 60 bones, whereas now, the Xbox itself is 100. I mean, what can we get? A Sega Genesis for 60? And if you're struggling to put food on the table, I'm not gonna tell you to eat Sonic spinball. I think it's goofy as hell to recommend anything like this for gaming on a budget. Like, one, you can emulate every and any Sega Genesis game on a damn not Sega Genesis, that's for sure. Yeah, you can say that about most consoles, but these ones? It's almost too damn simple to just play them on PC. Hell, like I said, just Google Play Sonic. It's like, am I really gonna tell you to invest in this? B, these games, while many are timeless classics, I mean, they aren't gonna last you long. Yes, I can play Mario 1 till the end of time, but it's more of a game you replay once a year for 30 minutes till the end of time. And hey, why limit yourself to a Sega Genesis when every console has a Sega Genesis collection for it? I think it's far better advice to go for consoles that aren't playable in web browsers and have games that are comparable to modern releases. And if that's not a Sega Genesis, it must be a PlayStation 3. An original console itself costs 100 bones, but the games? I was able to pick up Batman Arkham Asylum, Nino Kuni, Battlefield 3, Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix, Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, Borderlands 2, Uncharted 2, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, Mass Effect 2, Red Dead Redemption, and Just as Gods Among Us, Burnout Paradise, Assassin's Creed 2, and Minecraft, all for two 200 in total. Uh, pretty comparable to the Xbox One lot. I feel that many of these games scratch the same itches. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection is a damn good compilation of classic Genesis games. I wouldn't say it's as good as Rare Replay, but that one covers a wide breadth of titles from all different eras and platforms, which is what makes it so cool at its core. But this one's way more consistent, just 40-something classic Sega games. Have at it. Red Dead Redemption is definitely our Grand Theft Auto V here, but Hey, that game is also on PS3, so you're not missing out on the opportunity to play this if you don't have a PS4 or PS5. Which, hey, that is something to consider. Many of the games we're playing these days began life on these older consoles. GTA V, Skyrim, Minecraft. You don't need the latest and greatest to play this garbage, though it is fair to mention now, Minecraft for PlayStation 3 has not received updates in years. Grand Theft Auto V's online was shut down, uh, Skyrim on PS3, Stinks. But the core single player games are still there. Uh, they may not run as well and look as good and have as many features as the versions on subsequent platforms, but you can definitely get by with them. In fact, nearly all of these received remasters or re-releases, which says a lot about their quality. These are timeless games. They're just a little crunchy here. But they're all more than playable here on PlayStation 3. And considering the variety, open world games, racing games, first person shooters, RPGs, fighting games, action adventure games, retro games, and literally every other genre possible in the Genesis collection, for $200, you get one beefy ass lineup in a great console that's sure to last you a while. But if we compare it to what I picked up on Xbox One, I mean, it's not like the games here are leagues better than the games there. In fact, most of the PS3 games I got are available or have equivalents on Xbox One, which is a far more modern system, so most of its online features are still available, and the games will all run better on it, and the store includes all kinds of free trinkets to mess around with. I gotta be honest, I think the Xbox One is a better deal here. So how about the Xbox 360? Because one of these consoles we can snag for a cool 75. Game-wise, Flotsam was offering this bundle of Assassin's Creed 2, Batman Arkham City, Battlefield 3, Borderlands 2, Call of Duty 4, Dishonored, Gears of War 3, Grand Theft Auto 5, Halo 4, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Madden NFL 25, Sega Superstars Tennis, and Xbox Live Arcade Disc for $30. Okay, so this is more of a freak accident than an actual price point you can find these games at, but it just goes to show, if you look around enough, this kind of stuff is possible, and it's all thanks to lack of market relevance! Who wants Assassin's Creed 2 for Xbox 360? Not them. Nintendo and PlayStation have their diehard fans and collectors. Xbox? I mean, they're there, but it's just not the same. Maybe it's the lack of distinct, long-lasting franchises, save for Halo, it's shorter legacy by comparison, or sneakers. But secondhand Xbox stuff has always been valued quite a bit lower, and I don't see that drastically changing anytime soon. I was told the original Xbox is THE console to collect for. It's cheap as dirt now, but just you wait. I've become a man in that time. Sure, the original console's gone up in value, but the games? See, you'd think this is a sticker, but no. Just what the game is. 
fucking worthless. But just because the price is low doesn't mean the quality is too. I just don't think old Xbox games are in demand like the other platforms. I mean, what would you want here? Bad example, but hey, that just proves it's good to take advantage of the lack of demand. Here at Flotsam, I also picked up cameo elements of power, Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts, plus Viva Pinata combo pack, Trivial Pursuit, Tetris Evolution, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, Just Cause 2, Far Cry 3, Fallout New Vegas, Create, LA Noir, Dead Rising, and Skate 3, all for a grand total of $1.99. Jesus Christ. What a way to save money. After all of that, I saved negative $600. And yeah, I feel like we got a good idea as to what the used game market at retail is all about these days. Uh, yes, prices are higher across the board, but that doesn't mean you can't find good deals. Just might have to look around at different consoles than you're used to. I'd honestly recommend an Xbox One to those looking for a cheap console with affordable games. Uh, sure, the Xbox 360 is less expensive, but it's less expensive. A newer console means it's less likely to bust and the online servers and storefront will be active for the foreseeable future, meaning you can download free junk, play online multiplayer, use Xbox Game Pass. And hey, the Xbox One is backwards compatible with a pretty large selection of 360 and original Xbox games, which are damn cheap. Hell, <laughs> most of the games I bought for the 360 from Flotsam Games work here. If they don't, there's a remaster or equivalent available on the platform. I don't think the Xbox 360 console lot from Flotsam was a bad deal at all, but if you're gaming on a budget, I think it's important to not only factor in the price, but how far that platform can take you. But hey, I still grabbed all these games and loads more from the used game stores. The collection's starting to fill out again. But since the Xbox One is my console of choice for gaming on a budget, I feel I should get more games for that. But where? You all thinking what I'm thinking? Say it with me now. Who, Who gives, gives a shit? Let's, Let's go, go to a, a garage, garage sale. sale. Garage sales. Yeah, that's a great idea to get more Xbox One games on the cheap. Especially when they all come with mulch for free. Garage sales, yard sales. Yeah, you can find good deals at them, but at that point, you can find good deals anywhere. Just go house to house and ask people, do you have video games? These are more often than not a waste of time. What, you gotta spend your Saturday driving around neighborhoods, squinting at signs trying to decipher an address, then you go out of your way to show up just to be greeted by used baby clothes? And not even good ones. And you're taking a gamble as to if these sales will even have games, let alone working ones. It's almost always picking through the dirtiest, grimiest junk all to find a copy of Disney Infinity 2.0. Okay, well, at least, nope, it's Major League Baseball for the Intellivision. Oh, no, that's blood. I think it's fair to say, don't completely write off any method of finding games at a good price because it can happen anywhere. But hey, time is money, and it's up to you to decide what's worth it and what's not. Do you really want to dumpster dive a GameStop to find free games? I mean, we've all seen videos of the insane stuff people have found. Hey everybody, I just risked it all and looked inside the GameStop dumpster, and their trash is in great condition. More often than not, I buy my games on eBay and Amazon these days. Not because I'm looking for the best deal, rather, it's just easier. Convenience wins for me. If I want a specific game then and there, I'm okay paying a bit extra for shipping, quality, and the immediacy of finding what I want compared to hunting for it via garage sales for months, maybe years on end. That's what you pay for online, though stellar deals can still be prevalent. Lots, just big fat stacks of an assortment of games. If you're looking for a specific title, try including the word lot in the search and see if anybody's bundling it with others for a lower price. Combine that with referencing price charting websites to do a little bit of math to figure out if A plus B equals C. Look at this, I'm getting Take this lot for example, 16 Xbox One games, brand new, sealed. Starts the bidding at 100 bones, or we can buy it now for 130, and with the value of all of this being, oh my god, $80 off? I'm losing money not spending it. Well, keep in mind, these are all new copies. If all of these were used, holy fuck. I'm saving four dollars. Think of everything I can buy. But before we do that, God damn it, I already bought runts. If we're just looking to play these games, so who cares if we have cases and manuals and whatnot, the lowest average prices of all of this added up is. But hey, these are new 
copies, and they are worth more, so I can just resell the games I don't want. Yeah, go ahead, try and sell these games. Overwatch 1 doesn't even work anymore. So that's the dark side of video game lots. Yeah, this seems like a great deal, but think about it. Are you going to play all of these? And if you aren't, do you really want to go through the rigmarole of selling them? And if you did, do you even think you could? Many of the games included in these are filler titles that sellers are just trying to get rid of. Nobody buys them on their own, and if you're not careful, you will be stuck with these. I've had sexier nightmares. Lots can be a great way to score some deals, but you want to make sure you're actually getting a deal on the games you want here. And you can actually sell the games you don't want. In the used game market, price charting is my best friend. On a related note, I'm depressed. Use it to see what the going rate is on games to tell if a price is lower or higher than it normally goes elsewhere, and you should be good to go. But we can always go gooder. Some public libraries have used games available, of which you can use your library card to rent them out for free. Well, that's hard to beat. Also, damn hard to find. I think a lot of libraries tried to offer games and then immediately stopped once people took the games and ran. But hey, you can always visit your local one and see if they have some. I visited mine and found The Witcher, Tom Clancy, but I know if I want to get serious about game rentals, you gotta turn to Blockbuster, Redbox, Family Video. Game rentals exist about as much as my patience right now. I mean, what options are out there for me? Gamefly? our lord and savior. Okay, so I can rent two games at a time, max, for roughly the same price as Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Plus, or I can download any of these games. I don't have a limit to how many I can be playing at a time. I don't have to wait for my game to ship or worry about sending it back or the game coming in like, damn, no manual? Now, let's be fair here. This is a far wider selection of titles, including the latest and greatest compared to PlayStation Plus. I think Gamefly is good if you want to experience a few brand new releases, plus you can outright buy some games from them and they can have some pretty sweet deals. So they're good to keep in mind as an option. But when half the new releases these days are old ass games anyways, why even bother? Always a good idea to compare a full price re-release with the original to see if any enhancements or additions make it worth it. For example, if you were looking at a Nintendo Switch and the games you wanted were mostly all Wii U games, compare the going rates of both and consider what that old Wii U can do that a Switch can't. Maybe you don't care about any of the new original games or online multiplayer, DLC, or whatever. You just want to play Donkey Kong. We'll find that son of a bitch someday. It's hard to recommend specific things to do and buy because it always depends on the individual in question's situation and preferences. Uh, like buying a Wii U is more cost effective than the Nintendo Switch, but does that make up for everything? To some people it might, so you just have to ask yourself, do you want the best possible Mario Kart? Or do you want a Mario Kart? You'll still get the core Mario Kart 8 experience for a fraction of the price. But sometimes the best values in gaming aren't always the cheapest. I'm gonna show you how to game on a budget. Right after I show you how to fix a migraine. Listen, just because a game is cheap doesn't mean it's worth it or a great investment in the long run. Sometimes it's best to spend a little bit more to get a far better experience. You can buy 10 games, under five bucks a pop, and get like 100 hours total playtime, sure, but holy f Is that all entertainment should be? Just whatever nobody else at GameStop wanted? Some amazing games can be picked up this way. But here, I want to recommend games that I think are worthwhile at full price. Even when you're on a budget, these games can supply you with hundreds of hours of substantial entertainment. Let me clarify. These are just some of my personal picks for games I'd recommend to anybody, even if they're at full price. And that's because they have loads of substantial content. And many of these games take a while to play through, yes. But most of that time is spent on actual stuff. A lot of the longest games of all time achieve that title and nothing else. These are games that aren't just long. They're meaningful experiences. They give you so much more than just something to waste your free time with or something you walk away from and say, that was fun. These are worthy investments, even if you're on a budget. Now, these may not be the cheapest games. You can definitely spend your money on a handful of used titles instead. But in my opinion, if you can only have a few games in your collection, 
These are some that you can't go wrong with. First up, Second up, Super Mario Maker 2 is an obvious pick. I mean, what, is an infinite supply of levels not enough for you? If your answer is no, my god, imagine dating you. Listen, I may not have gotten as into Mario Maker 2 as the first, but that doesn't mean it's a lesser value. Far from it. We've got a full single-player campaign of Nintendo-made stages, which takes about as long as any other modern 2D Mario to finish. The infinite supply of levels available online, plus has worlds created by users that can honestly stand on their own as entire Mario games in their own right. Local and online multiplayer, and obviously the course builder, which you can put thousands of hours in itself if you're the creative type. All else fails, just recreate the old games in the level maker and voila! You got a compilation of the classic Marios on top of everything else. Sure, you need a subscription to access the online content, including all the user-made stages. But I think that's a small price to pay for what's genuinely an endless Mario game. And hey, you get all these extra bonuses with a paid membership, uh, such as the ability to purchase a Sega Genesis controller for $50? Well, aren't I glad I spent money? I can now spend money! The levels in Mario Maker 2 may not be as finely crafted and organic as what you may find in non-course creator platformers like Super Mario Bros. Wonder or Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, but they can still be pretty damn fun. The ingenuity all these creators have is a sight to behold, uh, taking an already extensive tool set and stretching it farther than you could possibly imagine. This is an incredible value no matter how you look at it. Mario Maker 2 is a total bargain, even at full price. No matter how much you've played, there's always something new to discover here. level of hell. All right, well, this is a list of games that I'd recommend regardless of price. I ain't gonna lie and act like the going rate of Hollow Knight isn't playing a huge factor here. Not only is this already one of the greatest Metroidvanias, it's one of the greatest Metroidvanias costing $15. If $15 takes you this far, imagine what 16 can do. Game compilations can oftentimes be hit or miss when it comes to value. Uh, sure, it's nice to have a collection of like-minded titles available in one package, but sometimes there's not enough improvements, extra features, and price-wise, it just might be better to buy the games individually. However, I think these right here are some of the greatest bundles of content ever on offer. I already gushed about Rare Replay and Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, but how about the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, alright? 13 Street Fighter games, 4 featuring online play, and all these extra additions make this a pretty great value for casual players. Kingdom Hearts All-in-One Package features nearly everything Kingdom Hearts up until Kingdom Hearts 3. Sure, a few games here are just represented via cutscenes, but I don't think it's a huge loss. Aw, oh, damn, no, that? It includes everything it needs to, and I think that still makes for an excellent collection. The God of War Saga and Metal Gear Legacy collection for PS3? <laughs> These were so damn good, but they just had to include download codes for some of the games which have all expired by this point. I was considering recommending Spider-Man Miles Morales since the Ultimate Edition came with Spider-Man Remastered, but but damn it! Why do all these collections do this? Like I can't in good conscience give Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2 on Switch my endorsement. Its download code will eventually expire. Well, that leaves us with Halo the Master Chief Collection. All six games looking better than ever. The full campaigns, the online multiplayer. This is a case where all of these on the original consoles would be a bit cheaper, but the improvements brought in here and the online play being available and active makes this worth it by comparison, in my opinion. <laughs> There's so many great compilations out there, so this is just scratching the surface. Three mobile games in one? That's more than two! Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Hot damn! It's five games in one! Originally released as just Shovel Knight at a cool 15 bones in 2014, it was already a stellar deal. But over the next five years, they kept adding junk to the point where we have four campaigns with different characters and a pretty expansive multiplayer fighting mode. All as free updates. Uh, eventually, they had to go... 
It was genuinely too much to offer for just 15, so the price went up to 40, with each portion of the game being available separately if you just want to play one of the campaigns. But 40 is still really damn good for what you get here. Also, if you bought the game for 15 back in the day, that's all you had to pay for. You never had to pay an extra fee to get any of this. This and Mario Maker 2 are some of the best bang for your buck 2D platformers. But Leps World 2 is free! Fuck. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. This game is repetitive as hell, just button mashing mush with Zelda frosting. If I'm gonna recommend this, I might as well recommend you just spam your keyboard because you'll get a similar amount of enjoyment out of that as you would with Hyrule Warriors. Man, Warriors games are just dumb fun. Uh, they can get tedious for sure. But zoning out and just plowing through enemies when you get in the groove, they are so relaxing. That or it may just be extremely lethargic. Regardless, Hyrule Warriors is pretty good, but you take what's a pretty good game and flood it with content, and now it becomes a pretty good game flooded with content. There's so much stuff. Stuff here! The Definitive Edition on Nintendo Switch features all content from both the Wii U and 3DS games, which includes multiple modes to plow through, nearly 30 playable characters, hundreds upon hundreds of hours of content here. This game never ends! It's the perfect title to just pick away at over time. I don't think this is the only game you should have if you're playing literally nothing but this. But as a supplemental game, you pop in from time to time, this will genuinely last you forever. This right here, I'd consider to be the definitive collection of open world games. Grand Theft Auto V, Red Dead Redemption 2, The Witcher 3, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, Elden Ring, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and or Tears of the Kingdom. You can't go wrong with any or all of these, frankly. I think each brings some unique spunk the others don't have. Uh, lots of different themes, time periods, and gameplay styles on display here. You can't beat GTA when it comes to sandboxing around. Even when you've exhausted all possibilities with the game, you haven't. And that's in addition to GTA Online, which is the sole reason why many even buy Grand Theft Auto to begin with. The Witcher 3 is one of the most expansive open world RPGs ever crafted, being more story focused and cinematic than something like Skyrim, which I'd say is more about going off and making your own adventure. Which, hey, both are excellent. If anything, that means you should get them together if possible. Elden Ring's probably the most unique of the bunch, considering you don't really have a waypoints or much of a plot stringing things along. It's just one big ass world with dungeons and enemies and boss fights throughout. Just pick a direction and you're immediately tossed into some of the most engaging gameplay out there. It's a dangerous, genuine adventure where no encounter is mindless. Which is why we have both. Red Dead 2 and Metal Gear 5 are stellar as well, but when it comes to Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, I mean, these are two of my favorite games of all time, and there's still hundreds of hours of content in both I haven't touched yet. But recommending only one is tricky. I mean, Tears of the Kingdom has far more content, but I feel its impact is lessened if you don't experience Breath of the Wild prior. It's probably the better pick though, so if you had to go with one, pick up Tears of the Kingdom. This is one of the defining examples of what an open world game could be and should be. These titles are some of the meatiest you can buy. They can last you a lifetime while delivering some of the most worthwhile and memorable gaming moments you will ever experience. Poyo Poyo Tetris 2. Now, why would I buy this when I can just keep grinding away at the free demo? Well, Poyo Poyo Tetris 2, in my opinion, is one of, if not the best puzzle game out there. Surely the best Tetris and Poyo Poyo game at the very least. Because not only can you enjoy this as just a Tetris game or just a Poyo Poyo one, but you get a full on single player campaign and so many different special modes combining the two games. Online multiplayer, local multiplayer. This is like the perfect puzzle package. 
just a great game to play when you're in the mood for something like this. I am in the mood for something like this. RPGs, where, are normally some of the longer video games out there, taking dozens of, if not hundreds of hours to complete. And while I'm not the most into the genre, I definitely know some good ones when I see them, which is why my eyes are perpetually closed. But here we are, Persona 5 Royal, Dragon Quest XI S, Baldur's Gate 3. These games are all damn rich in content and depth. Uh, Persona 5, 40 hours in, you're still getting tutorials. There's also Dragon Quest Builders 2 for a bit of an RPG and Minecraft hybrid, uh, World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV Online if you want massively multiplayer online RPGs and genuinely nothing else out of life. But there, those are my RPG recommendations. <laughs> Of course a Super Smash Brothers has to be here. I mean, look at all this stuff. Nearly every game in the franchise has unlimited replay value in the multiplayer department and an extensive amount of single player content. If I had to pick one game to play until the end of time, well, I would surely be wise to make that a Smash Brothers. Surely. But which one? Well, Smash Brothers Ultimate has the most content, the most fighters, stages, music, the works. But then my eyes start to wander to previous entries. I mean, Brawl has a full story mode with CGI cutscenes and levels to explore, whereas Ultimate has this 20 to 30 hour slog of an adventure mode consisting of nothing but fights with barely any cutscenes and this JPEG of a map to wander around on. You had game demos in Brawl, full 3D trophies, stickers, albums, put the stickers in. The coin launcher game, target test, stage builder with all these different parts to use. Oh, we have a full list of all Nintendo published games included just because. In comparison, Ultimate is far more focused on the core content, the stuff that matters. But that honestly makes everything surrounding it a bit lackluster. I do think Brawl has the better single player offerings. But at the end of the day, who f***ing cares? I can talk to death about how much I liked Coin Launcher, but it's f***ing Coin Launcher. Smash Ultimate is the one to get. Doesn't mean it's perfect, doesn't mean it has everything I'd want out of a Smash game, but I'd be a fool for acting like it isn't the ultimate Smash Brothers. The ultimate f***ing Smash Brothers without coin launcher, I'm sure. I could go all day with this. I mean, so many indie games are an absurd value. Uh, Hades, Spelunky 2, Binding of Isaac, Stardew Valley. I think Sonic Mania is a Deal. There's the classic Doom games that are like five bucks a pop. That's crazy. Then there's all the Sim games out there. Uh, Sim City, The Sims, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Zoo Tycoon, the Animal Crossing series. Uh, the Civilization games are infinitely replayable. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled are packed kart racers. And of course, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. And you know what? It barely crossed the 50 Worldwide Classics minimum to be considered a good deal. But like I said, this has all been just my perspective, which is the tricky thing about budget gaming recommendations. There's pros and cons to everything, so it always depends on your preferences. I could tell you all day to buy games from one to two generations back for great experiences at dirt cheap prices. But you probably don't wanna do that. You want the latest and greatest. Uh, well then Gamefly or Xbox Game Pass might be good for you. Uh, but no, you wanna actually own these games. Well, make sure you're following social media accounts hell bent on alerting you when sales pop up. Oh, but you don't wanna be scouring the internet all the time for deals. What do you want from me? There are always options out there. You may have to be a bit creative. You may have to be patient, but no matter what games you're into, there are always effective ways to save while playing what you want. And if you can't get what you want right now, then making do with what's available can open yourself up to amazing experiences you wouldn't have had otherwise. And hey, by the time you're done with those, the game you wanted in the first place may be cheaper now. Patience is key to gaming on a budget. Which is crazy because throughout the past 50 minutes, I've been taking advantage of these tips all at once and I've been able to rebuild my game collection in record time. It's crazy how quickly I did that. It's also crazy how quickly the collections agency found my address.